welcome to the January 16th meeting of the Raleigh Appearance Commission. The commission is charged with providing guidance, advice, and recommendations regarding the visual quality and aesthetic characteristics of the city of Raleigh. The, member of the members of the commission are volunteers who, who are dedicated to the quality of design in Raleigh and represent a varied field of expertise. Today we're going to have staff review um, the staff report prior to each applicant's presentation and identify administrative alternate findings that the applicant will need to address. For the applicants presenting cases this afternoon, we ask that you take no more than 10 minutes to present your case. When you arrive at the podium, please state your name and address for the record. And once you present your case, including all the required items, the commission may ask you questions regarding your case and will then table it for further discussion. After that, we may ask you to come forward, um, again, for clarification. So after the discussion, the commission will set forth a recommendation to the planning director for a final determination. So thank you, and now we're going to start the agenda. Case number AAD 1-20 for 603 Wilmington Street, South Wilmington Street. Thank you. Um, this is a case uh, the applicant is re uh, requesting actually both uh, Build 2 and Building Massing alternates. Um, the first one, Build 2, Section 1.5.6. Uh, the intent uh, is to provide a range of building placement that strengthens the street edge along the right-of-way. Establishing a sense of enclosure by providing spatial definition adjacent to the street. Um, the building edge can be supplemented by architectural elements and certain tree plantings aligned in a formal rhythm. Um, the harmonious placement of buildings to establish a street edge is a <coughs> principal means by which the character of an area or dis district is defined. Um, third, the build two range is established to accommodate some flexibility in specific site design while maintaining the established street edge. Um, this is a case that you have seen, I think, very recently as a courtesy review, so it should be pretty familiar. Um, but a 12-story hotel is proposed for a half-acre site at the corner of South Wilmington and East Lenore Streets. Uh, the uh, zoning is down uh, DX12, Urban General, Conditional Use. Um, both of the streets uh, are considered primary streets. So in terms of the build to, 70% uh, uh, build to is required. Um, Along um, East Lenore Street, the uh, applicants are proposing 66%. Uh, there's a rather sizable um, building set back on the first floor. Uh, and that's really the issue is that this is primarily the uh, ground floor plane. Uh, the upper stories do, I think, meet that 70%, uh, but they do have a substantial um, uh, building plane set back. So uh, they're requesting that. Um, so the second request, um, I'm sorry, in terms of the findings for Bill 2, uh, number one, that the alternate meets the intent of the Bill 2 regulations. Number two, that it conforms to the comp plan and any adopted city plans. Number three, it does not substantially negatively alter the character defining street wall or establish a Bill 2 pattern that is not harmonious with the existing built context. Number four, um, that uh, the change in percentage of building that occupies a Bill 2 area or increased setback does not negatively impact pedestrian access, comfort, or safety. Uh, and the last one, any site area that would have otherwise been occupied by buildings is converted to an outdoor amenity area. Uh, in terms of the uh, building massing, um, uh, the intent is to manage the impact of tall buildings along uh, near the public right of way. Um, the, the applicant mentions that instead of the uh, 12 foot uh, that's required between the third and eighth floor, uh, that they have one to two foot along Wilmington Street and eight to nine and a half feet along the North Street, um, I'll, I'll provided the fifth and sixth floors, uh, that's, uh, where that uh, top of their parking garage is, they have their amenity area along the um, Lenore Street. Um, they're also uh, mentioned that uh, highlighting the basement on top. Um, and then uh, in addition, they are providing a, a, an increased uh, setback along both streets as well as a, a substantial setback along the ground floor uh, at the corner especially. Uh, in terms of the findings, uh, number one, the alternate must meet the intent of the building massing regulations. Uh, it conforms with the comp plan and adopt the city plans. Number three, um, if it uses a change in building materials to mimic a change in the wall plane that the most substantial and durable materials are located at the bottom floors of the building. Uh, number four, um, if the alternate proposes a building setback behind the sidewalk, in lieu of a required step back, the resulting open space includes public amenities such as seating areas, trees, and landscaping or outdoor dining. And number five, that the building contains architectural treatments for delineating the base, middle, and the top of the building. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, like I said before, they were in here a month or so ago. Um, and 
you have any questions of me, I'll hand it over to the applicant. Hello, it's great to see some uh, familiar faces again. Um, my name is Sanjeev Patel, um, principal at Duda Paint Architects. And I'm Michael Van Pran, uh, and McAdams. So we recently uh, were up, again, up at the Board of Adjustments this Monday. I don't know if we want to give an update on that. We can do a quick. Sure, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Um, I think we had 11 items on the agenda. Um, most of them were kind of transportation related and spacings of the driveways. It's kind of a suburban go. They had to be a certain far away. So I think four of them were from that. Um, <clears throat> one of them was from the loading dock. <laughs> you can't have. Um, a car back in or back out of a site, yep. kind of again, once a more of a suburban thing. So we got relief from that. Um, the big ones that are relevant, I think, to this this case are the outdoor amenity area. Um, so we had discussions about outdoor amenity area being covered in the downtown district. Um, There's some back and forth with staff as to why that intent was there in the first place. Um, was it to provide shade? Was it to activate the space? But we came to the conclusion that it was fitting for this space. So we are kind of activating that corner and that is the intent um, of that intersection. And then we've also trying to activate that sixth floor where the building step back would otherwise be. Um, and there's some code that we got relief from. And so we're able to actually provide the outdoor amenity area on that sixth floor terrace and have it count. Um, and then one nuanced thing is due to the angles of the building kind of shrinks down to less than 10 feet. And so we got a reduction to go down to eight feet, eight inches, something like that. Um, so we have all of those. And I think, I think that's all 11 of them, unless I'm forgetting one of them. But so the, the idea, once again, is to activate that corner. And they found it fitting. Um, oh, sorry. And the column encroachments. Mm -hmm. So the building um, along, the sidewalk. along the sidewalk, along Lenore Street, um, it's kind of due to this, I think it's a 105 foot parcel width. It's, it's very constrained. And so we're providing kind of um, more ground plane windows along Lenore Street and going to activate it with, as you'll see, loose furnishings, materials um, that are above and beyond kind of cone minimum, so to speak. And so they found that fitting as well. And so they've allowed those columns to encroach in, into the streetscape along Lenore Street. So I'll just give a quick uh, rundown through the, the PDF. Um, just, just to reiterate the site, uh, it's just north of the McDonald's on, uh, on Wilmington, the corner of Wilmington and Lenore. Um, it's at the confluence of a you know, couple of different districts. The site, the lot is really tiny. Um, like Michael said, it's like 105 feet by 210. Um, so it's been pretty challenged to try to fit all this into onto the site. Um, and uh, I think maybe just move forward to the, the corner view. Um, the, uh, this photo montage kind of explains a little bit of the massing and you know, how we're, we're trying to really set back on the ground floor to try to allow for a lot more uh, sidewalk and pedestrian space. That's part of the 10% uh, um, open amenity uh, square footages that we're providing. And then also, um, we've now been allowed to use uh, this amenity deck at the at the level six as part of that uh, calculation as well. Um, but you can see we are clearly trying to articulate the different volumes, um, sort of the ground level, the, the parking uh, volume, uh, and the top with the with the hotel rooms. Um, kind of going back to the ground floor. I think the area in question that uh, is this angle here where it does not meet the, the build to zone. Um, and like Carter was mentioning, you know, overall the, on the project, um, everything else above uh, indeed does. I think we have 148 um, linear feet that's required based on the lots. We're providing 141, so about seven feet uh, short. Um, and so the angle, again, is more of a design um, design move trying to open up the corner and um, provide as much pedestrian area. Now this corner will be covered, part of it will be covered um, by, the, by the volume above. 
Um, so just to back up a little bit, this, the, uh, this is a small office uh, component here on the ground level. Um, the hotel lobby is in fact this area here. So we're really trying to draw um, folks closer to the hotel entrance. Um, so that's part of the reason for the angle. And then, you know, we've got the curb cuts as far away from the intersection as, as we possibly can. <coughs> and then just a few um, vignettes looking at uh, the sidewalk and the space um, at the corner. You know, we've, we've got uh, a, a bus stop on Wilmington um, that will be here. We're trying to provide, you know, planters and cedars, uh, seating um, along, along both Wilmington and, and Lenore. Um, so where we have the columns on Lenore, you know, trying to activate it with, with some streetscape and uh, planters. And then this is the amenity level. Um, so for the hotel area here, kind of their lounge, uh, bar, and uh, breakfast kind of overlooking. Um, really trying to activate again that uh, northwest corner of Wilmington and Lenore. Um, so zooming in on that corner, um, that's really the primary view is from that area, looking out towards um, towards downtown. <coughs> and then, uh, as far as the elevation materials are concerned, you know, we are looking at a. Um, an open parking garage, so uh, perforated uh, metal panels. Um, we are working through the design right now, but as you can see, we are starting to introduce some color. I think that's one of the responses from last, from the courtesy review was introduction of color. And we'll have to work with the, the Hilton brand and their brand standards and all that, but I think our idea is to really inter integrate color, pick up on, um, you know, textiles. That's sort of uh, one of the um, you know, cultural, historical, um, you know, references that we can make to, to Raleigh in North Carolina. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a abstract way of trying to pick up on, on that with the patterning on the, on the parking garage. Um, and one thing, so this is, this elevation showing, um, the East end and then the, um, the, the West end along Wilmington. Um, we want to introduce uh, a mural at the corner. Uh, it's something that we didn't have before. Um, we are anticipating getting rid of the loading dock, but not sure yet. But uh, in either way, we think we can, that's a great corner for, for some art and a mural. And we probably would wrap the corner on the south facing the McDonald's as well. And so that's, um, that would happen here at this corner here. Now, um, the elevation that's uh, facing south is really an important elevation as you're coming into downtown. Um, and so this, our base design here uh, is showing um, a solid precast wall. Because of the fire separation, we're right on the property line. Um, we are stepping back um, with the um, hotel rooms above. So we're going to a, um, a metal panel here, probably a corrugated metal panel. Um, but we do want to articulate the precast, and so these are some examples of, of other projects that we've done where we're really trying to give some relief and some uh, pick up on the south face. Uh, you know, we have the opportunity of some some uh, light and shadow play to happen. And so, what that pattern is, I think, is still um, up for up for debate. Um, here's another version of that where we're, the reveals that we're showing are more vertical reveals in the precast, but then we're introducing uh, color. Um, that we're, we're, you know, uh, starting from the, the north part of the building and wrapping around to the south, and then also um, same thing with the metal panels on the on the um, the room, the volume of the hotel rooms themselves. Uh, I mean, this is a, a uh, it's a chance for a kind of creating a billboard type of moment. Architecture is billboard, if you will, um, facing south, and we know the McDonald's is. Um, also going in for a renovation, and so it's likely that this is going to be visible for you know for some quite some distance. So we think it's an artistic opportunity, um, and so this is an, another example um, because of just the the orthogonal nature of the grid. Um, we think maybe something that's uh, like on a diagonal or or non-orthogonal could be a really interesting uh, counterpoint and could could have make a strong bold uh, statement. I'm not saying that this is it, but I think. Um, we're trying to integrate the, uh, you know, whereas the rest of the, 
the project, we're really delineating the south, uh, excuse me, the, the bar at the top from the garage. I think here is a chance to uh, make that screen on the south kind of integrated through the patterning and the art um, and color. And so whether it's the, um, the reveals in the precast and um, the color in the metal panel trying to create an overall composition that is thoughtful and, and can become like a gateway into, um, into Raleigh from the south. So that's the gist of it. These are you know, sections um, that I think uh, talk about the step backs, but I think we've already um, taken care of that with the board adjustments. But we can talk through these in more detail if we want to. I think that's that's pretty much it. What was your comment? Sorry, I have laryngitis. <clears throat> what was your comment with regards to the loading dock? You said with the possible art rule. Will you repeat what you said again, please? So um, we may try to get rid of the loading dock altogether, okay. um, term, just in terms of servicing for the hotel. If we have to keep it for operational reasons, there'll still be a, a door, a roll down door, but I think we can integrate that door with the art on the door itself and the wall as it turns to wrap it. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? I just have to recuse myself from this. All right. If not, if we have more questions, we'll call you back up. I don't think anyone's here from the public, but in case they are, step forward. Okay. All right. So we'll table it. Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Well, a lot of it's taken off of us with the Board of Adjustments, with the step back bit. That's gone now. They got permission on that bar level to count that area. I, still, I think we still have to, Carter, this is a level. question. From yeah. an intent standpoint, do we still have to basically, are they still here Speaking for- Speaking of the microphone. Oh, sorry. Are they still here for, um, I guess, recommendation for approval on building massing, or is that no longer part of our review? Building massing and, and okay. build two. Build two. So we still, the, the intent, this, the normal process. Yeah. And with the Carter also explanation here with the, the bar area, the rooftop space there, how does that affect us? They were saying that the, the adjustments have allowed them to incorporate that as a part of their percentage. That is to um, satisfy their site amenity area. That's not something that you okay. guys have purview over. All right. It's, um, yeah, they, they got permission to do that and have also covered um, uh, amenity area, which is not, not normal. standard in the okay. four stories. Yeah. Got it. Thank yeah, you. When it comes into play, is that enough of a step back and right. for you in that upper level? I appreciate the color that's been added. Let's start with that. I, I also echo, I mean, I think parking, parking decks in general in the middle part of a building is something we're stuck with for a while, a while. as long as we have cars. And I, I hate it, but it's part of just where we are as a city. And so the careful and the thoughtful, you know, approach to this one, I really do appreciate. Mm -hmm. So, and I would encourage you to continue to explore that and keep that as a high priority because it is very much a billboard as you come into the city Absolutely. and then internally, it's going to be a very important view. Yeah, I think of time and place, right? Where we are in development and what we can do and what we can do and the fact that these are infill sites that we're going to have more and more of. <laughs> Very the much. black and white of the UDO <clears throat> is there as kind of a guidelines and the benefit of this group is to give you great feedback around how the building can be better and react better and I think you guys did a great job of, of really carving out the pedestrian experience yep. uh, working with the 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 restraints and turning the challenges into opportunities um, you know it's it's thoughtful um, and and even with the project typology it's a you know dual flag hotel it's got certain standards and everything else so in my opinion, I think they've, they've done a good job of, of owning the challenges with opportunities. So. Agreed. Well said. Yeah, I agree. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate just the attention to the public realm in general. Like, it, you know, there's lots of 
porosity, if that's how you want to talk about it, at the base level where, mm -hmm. you know, pedestrians can really interact with the building. There's active uses on that ground floor. So I just I appreciate yep. that it's something that um, will actually, I think, activate and benefit the site. So I'll invite him. <clears throat> and if you figure out get rid of this servicing, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret, you, secret you're not sharing. <laughs> So are the maybe the two south elevations we saw are still in play or? I think we even saw three actually, mm -hmm. three different options. Three. So yeah, okay. I think they're studying. Oh, I see. Yes, I think artistically what that ought to be. Purview, though. I mean, are they part of our purview? Not really, but mm -hmm. I mean, so we can't I, I comment. Appreciate the extra effort mm -hmm. there. Absolutely, I mean, that's, that's a huge. Mm -hmm. That is a big challenge, um, and I appreciate the extra effort to to look at that. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think these McDonald's sites, they, they hold on to them pretty oh, strongly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Seems like the ones that have more like depth and texture are probably going to be more successful with light versus just applying a pattern or color. But yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Yep. And his comment with regards to being seven feet off on the build two. 66% versus 70% on East Lenore with the amenity area added. You know, we keep talking about the pedestrian experience. It is more inviting across the board. Yeah. Um, and again, tight site did their best. I mean, this is it's huge for a tight site like that. Excellent. I mean, it's excellent work to be that close. And I think it's much improved over what we saw during the courtesy review as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, looking at this rendering, I just wanted to make sure um, the corner facing us has a little more grass uh, in this rendering. I'm guessing it's the the other ones are more recent, or it's more yeah urban. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. I think this was actually uh, like a street view image. Oh, gotcha. It's a photo yeah, yeah. montage. Yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. But yeah, I like the more open hardscape. I think it's it's welcoming, like you said, to the the lobby entrance and, and to the rest of the surrounding area. Yeah, I think the public actually benefits mm -hmm. from the build two not being met. So okay. I agree. Right. Yeah. All, right. All right, let's go through the findings. Um, the approved alternate meets the intent of the build two regulations. Um, I think we all feel like it does. Yeah. Um, the approved alternate conforms with the comprehensive plan and adopted city plan, so help me substantiate that. Um, I think policy LU 2.1, placemaking, for sure. Um, LU 5.1, reinforcing the urban pattern. Policy DT 7.12, plaza square and perimeter uses. UD 2.7, public open space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the approved alternate does not substantially negatively alter the character defining street wall or establish a build to pattern that is not harmonious with existing built context. Mm -hmm. I think we're pretty good on that one. Mm -hmm. And the change in percentage of building that occupies the build to area <coughs> or increase setback does not negatively impact pedestrian access, comfort, or safety. And from what I'm hearing, we feel like it in actually enhances that. Mm -hmm. And the site area that would have otherwise been occupied by buildings is converted to an outdoor amenity area. And so, does anybody want to make a motion? We'll move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, let's move on to building massing. Mm -hmm. Can you, who, who seconded that? Okay. All right. So for massing, the findings are that the approved alternate meets the intent of the building massing regulations. And I think it does. Anybody agree? Mm -hmm. All right. yeah. The approved alternate conforms with the comp plan and adopted city plans. So help me substantiate that. Policy LU 7.4, scale and design of new commercial uses. Policy LU 5.1, reinforcing the urban pattern. Anybody else want to throw something in there? UD 4.5, improving street environment. Four, UD 4.1. Mm -hmm. 
If the approved alternate uses a change in building material to mimic a change plane in a wall, the most substantial and durable building materials are located at the bottom floors of the building. I don't think it's taken advantage of that option. I think it meets that intent. If the approved alternate proposes a building setback behind the sidewalk in lieu of a required setback, the resulting open space includes public amenities such as seating areas, trees, landscaping, outdoor dining. I think we already kind of covered that mm -hmm. with, with the build two. And the building contains architectural treatments for delineation of the base middle and top of the building. I think it does. Mm -hmm. All right. Motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't like that. Well, me neither. <laughs> All right. So this is for I lost my agenda, sorry. AAD two dash twenty ninety nine fifty one Strickland Road. Applicant is requesting an administrative alternate for UDO section 7.1.7 vehicle parking lot landscaping. The intent of the vehicle parking lot landscaping requirement is to minimize the visual impact of large areas of vehicle parking as viewed from the public right of way and dissipate the effects of the urban heat island effect. A well designed parking lot utilizes landscaped islands and clear delineations to break the parking lot into smaller segments. Tree and shrub, shrub planting should not interfere with the pedestrian circulation on the site. The applicant is proposing to redevelop a vacant portion of a 43.63 acre site zoned plan development containing a multifamily residential retirement development. An additional multifamily residential building is proposed along, the associated, along with associated surface parking. Per UDO section 7.1.7.D.1, a landscaped interior island must be provided every 10 parking spaces and be evenly distributed throughout the parking area. The applicant is requesting an alternate to the 10 space requirement and planting requirement in three locations throughout the new parking area. The purpose of these longer stretches of parking is to accommodate large structures for additional covered parking for the comfort of their residents. In lieu of meeting the interior island requirements, the applicant proposes to plant the three required trees and landscaping elements at the perimeter of the parking lot rather than the interior. So the findings to be met for this case are that one, the approved administrative alternate meets the intent of the vehicle parking lot regulation, that it conforms with the comprehensive plan and adopted city plans, and is considered equal to or better to the standard. Right, are there any questions? <laughs> uh, good afternoon, or maybe it's good evening. I don't know what, if it's close to five, but anyway. Uh, my name is Peter Knossen. I work with Jones Knossen Engineering in Apex, uh, civil engineer for the Cypress project. Uh, just to orient you a little bit to the site, it pretty much compromises or com uh, the entire block, so to speak, of uh, Harvest Oaks, Forum Drive, Lead Mine, and uh, Strickland. Um, just to let you know where we are in the process, uh, Villa E is the last building which will be built in, in the uh, community, which is a continuing care retirement community. Um, it will orient itself more to the, to the intersection of Strickland Road and Lead Mine. Um, we are, uh, have submitted a uh, blue line revision. It is a project that's under construction uh, with the building. Most of the site work is complete. The building's going up and uh, we're submitted this blue line revision uh, to hopefully get approval uh, for this uh, parking, uh, parking change. Uh, covered parking is very important to the community. Uh, it is existing at every building uh, out on the site. Uh, what we are proposing is not any different uh, than what has already been built. Um, it's just a deviation from the current code. Um, it's important really for the community at large, which is geared toward the retirement, in senior living, uh, it's important for them to have as much covered parking as possible to keep them out of the elements. Uh, many of these people are use in using wheelchairs, walkers, uh, f and have assistance. Uh, so it's just an important, um, um, important for them to have. A, mm -hmm. um, just uh, as far as these pictures are concerned, um, what is up before you is the basically the frontage of the property along Lead Mine. 
um, looking south. The property is to the left. This view here is looking east along Strickland Road. Again, the property uh, is on the right-hand side, uh, basically in this area. Actually, when I looked at this picture, it's kind of interesting. This uh, tree right here is a very prominent pine, which uh, the residents said you will not remove. <laughs> so that basically the building and the parking is gonna be sit sitting back from that pine tree. Um, specific to the site, is, um, can I write on this like we used to? Okay. With the finger, okay. Um, we have existing tr or tree conservation area here. Um, there is tr tree conservation with isolated trees here. And all this landscaping oriented towards Strickland Road are, is all existing. Uh, what we are proposing is to extend uh, covered parking in this area, in this area. Um, this will be new covered parking here, and we want to provide new covered parking in that area too. Um, how do we erase? I, I, forgot how to, I forgot how to erase. Menu, menu okay. It ain't, it ain't clear. There we go. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, let me tell you. <laughs> Um, this view is uh, the parking itself, um, the building. Oops. You can zoom out. Can I, can I zoom? Yeah. Ah, okay. There you go. All right. And just touch clear again. Yeah. All right. Here is the building. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm used to uh, scrolling, I'm sorry. There you go. There we go. Building here, uh, that is Villa E. Uh, parking is, is mm -hmm. this is all new cover, our parking, our covered parking. Uh, where we are adding covered parking is here, 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 and here. Um, what we will be removing um, through the covered parking are basically uh, three, three trees. They're oriented here, here, and here. Um, all the, you can see the tree conservation area was there. And then all you can see here, all of this. It's basically all new landscaping. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very he heavily landscaped site. Um, hopefully you've been by there, um, but it is a beautiful community uh, with heavy landscaping. Um, so it's the trees that we will be removing will be replaced. Um, they're oriented in this lo these three lo those two mm -hmm. locations. Again, your covered parking are here, 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 and here, identified in the, uh, in the pink color. Um, we appreciate your support for this. Um, like I said, it's a project under construction, very important to the community to have the covered parking and um, can't answer any questions that you might have. But uh, um, it's a, like you said, it's a lot of uh, landscaping out there. The, um, uh, there's really not a whole lot more that can be done to enhance uh, the site in terms of the parking. It's visually from the streets, very difficult to see with all the existing landscaping and uh, <laughs> They've done a really nice job as far as the la the landscape architect. Mm -hmm. So, here to answer any questions. Show me that pine tree. <laughs> <laughs> You'll make him work for it. You You'll make him work for it. <laughs> you mean in plan? You'll make me work, huh? Can and I I've zoom? never heard people like zoom. a pine. This is new to me. There it is. I see it. Let me zoom a little more. Basically next to the two that you're replanting. Pretty much, pretty close. It's right there. It's so okay. tall, it looks like a cell phone tower. <laughs> What's the material um, for the roof on the covered parking? Is that just like asphalt shingles or? I'm not, I don't believe, I believe it is shingles, yes. Mm -hmm. Didn't you bring photographs of the existing when you were here for your courtesy mm -hmm. review? I think I, I have memories of it. He did, of yeah. It. 
I, unfortunately, I don't, I don't have those with me tonight. That's okay. Okay. But I can tell you all the materials that are being used match what's existing mm -hmm. out, on, out on the site. Yeah. It, it, was, it was pretty nice. Concrete columns and shingle roofs. Yeah. All right. We don't have any questions. All right. Thank you. Thanks. And I'm going to master this computer one day. Okay. <laughs> All right, I don't think we have anyone from the public, but if we do, please come forward, okay? All right, we'll table it for discussion. Any concerns about this? Yeah, I think as we looked at it before, I mean, it's pretty densely yeah. wooded around. I mean, it doesn't affect the nope. and that, passerby. Yeah. You, know, you, you never even see it, but it, and it is nicely done. The landscape's incredible, and as he was drawing, it just went on and on and on, and the fact that they're taking those three trees and putting them somewhere else, or at least adding three more trees, that's going above what I expected. All right. Would we like to go ahead and knock this one out? Did it. All right. The approved administrative alternate meets the intent of the vehicle parking lot regulations. Would you like me to read the intent? The intent of the vehicle parking lot landscape regulation or requirement is to minimize the visual impact of large areas of vehicular parking as viewed from the public right of way and to dissipate the effects of the urban heat island. Um, trees are meant to break parking lots into smaller segments and they should not interfere with pedestrian circulation. So mm -hmm. I feel like all those things are still being met mm -hmm. with the covered parking. The approved administrative alternate conforms with the comp plan and adopted city plans. Maybe policy T 5.9 pedestrian networks. Policy T 6.8 yep. parking lot design. Mm -hmm. PD 5.3. Mm -hmm. Okay. And finally, the approved alternate is considered equal to or better than the standard. Yes. I think, it, I think it is. All right. Do I hear a motion? Motion to approve? Anybody? Make a motion to approve. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to do the.